All right. So, coaches, this is a this is a different way to look at special teams. It's called the new spin on the kicking game, and it uh, a lot different than uh, uh, special teams in every aspect. Uh, we've taken the military concept, which has been done before with special forces, um, and take it to a whole different level with the military mindset involved into football. Not losing the techniques and the fundamentals of football, we're doing a new spin to it. So uh, here's a, a acknowledgement to the, a lot of people that have helped me throughout uh, my 17, 18, going on 18 years now. Um, a big, big uh, acknowledgement to Frank Beamer um, was huge at helping me uh, um, with, with all my stuff. Um, and then uh, Dick Arbuckle from Arizona State down to Coach Beamer, or I'm sorry, uh, Coach Vermeil, who uh, has been a, a huge addition to me and helping me out, and a number of NFL guys, and and uh, Greg Williams from the Jets, who also is with the Bills, uh, and that's my hometown in Buffalo, but also lived in Pontiac and, and Auburn Hills uh, areas um, in Michigan. Uh, spent I uh, started my coaching career there, which you'll see here coming up um, in Waterford Kettering for two years. I started off as a volunteer coach and then uh, moved to freshman under Ed Couturier, who's uh, my first head coach, who gave me the shot when no one else would give me a shot. Um, and he's a big mentor to me. And then we kind of moved over to Waterford Mata, a rival school, and jumped down with uh, Ken Schmidt there, who... Um, Gave me my real shot and put me in charge of special teams. And uh, both coaches, we, we uh, Coach Couturier and Coach Schmidt, were good friends. So uh, those guys helped mentor me um, through my uh, starting of my career. And Coach Schmidt just gave me special teams. And at that point, I was like, geez, thanks. Um, not everyone wants to do special teams. Um, and neither did I at the time. I had no clue about it except playing it in high school as a kick returner, punt returner, and a wide receiver. I was on all special teams at Sabino High School out here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, and so I took that and ran with it big time um, and decided to use my Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins Association uh, with uh, uh, go after the, if you want to be the best, go after the best. So that's when I started contacting all these head coaches. And I don't take no for an answer. So four months to get in touch with uh, Vermeil and, and Coach Beamer, Coach Parcells from uh, in the NFL. I just was hounding everybody at knowledge. Um, and high school coach, I had to use my ways to get through the system to get in touch with these guys, which then propelled me over to the um, junior college level uh, in here in Tucson. The only way to get get a job, it seemed, was to go junior college way. Uh, no one in Michigan was bringing me aboard. Um, so I uh, had to move to Arizona and, um, and start my uh, coaching career in college here. Started at Pima Community College, um, moved to uh, Scottsdale after three years at the Pima College, moved to Scottsdale, and then uh, my new head coach, Jim, uh, Jim uh, Monaco, who's a great friend of mine, um, Boston guy. Um, brought me back to Pima College. All, uh, both three times uh, starting at Pima College or number one. And, I'm sorry, let me say this different. Three, top three of the nation and all the units on special teams throughout the nation and junior college along with um, being in the top things. When I was at Scottsdale, we were number one across the board on all seven units. And uh, I say seven, some people are probably going seven units. I include the field goal block. Um, so we look at all those seven units of everything. Um, and we're number one across the board in everything uh, on Scottsdale. Coming back to Pima, guess what? Top three in the nation on special teams. Uh, Scottsdale's uh, specials went down and just destroying everybody. So that's, that's my step there. Um, I did a lot of speaking throughout the nation 
um, in Cleveland and in Cincinnati. Um, my biggest, my beginning of all this speaking stuff started at Battle Creek, where I pushed my way into the talks there. Um, and it was an incredible first time ever speaking. Um, and this actually is one of the talks that I started, but man, has it blown up since then. I've learned so much. And to this day, uh, just literally 20 minutes ago, I was online looking at different stuff for my bomb squad uh, presentation. So I am nonstop learning after 18 years trying to grab more knowledge from people. So we'll get this thing going. Here's my, uh, my college career um, and my rankings throughout Scottsdale and Pima College and the years are blended there. Been to three bowl games, been ranked number four in the nation as a, as a college team, um, which was awesome. And uh, top rankings, I've pushed out a lot of uh, um, players, 36 players to be, 37 now to be exact, uh, to Division One, Division Two ball. Um, here's all, a lot of my players. I'm missing one that just got uh, offered for Mississippi State. Um, and we actually had two players from Pima College um, just get picked up by the Chargers and the Arizona Cardinals. Um, Jeff Cotton our wide receiver from Pima College and Sergio Hoffman from uh, Pima College also got hit with the Arizona Cardinals. And we've had numerous guys from Scottsdale go to the NFL also. Um, some advice from my coaches that have helped me out, Marv Levy, Marvin Lewis, and my, my guy Dick Vermeil. Um, and uh, they've been in tremendous help. Also guys that have helped me, Chuck Prefer from the Detroit Lions, um, good pals with Nick Harris, who really helped me with my punting technique. Um, and uh, Dick Vermeil told me, if you're gonna learn special teams, learn every position on special teams. So I've worked with linemen from the NFL, uh, line coaches, um, special teams coaches, of course, but I went after like DB coaches for, to, for punt return to shut down these gunners. And I worked with receiving coaches from the NFL. Um, Sam Cash was a, a huge help for me for the Detroit Lions. So a lot of guys have helped me with the Detroit Lions, especially Chuck Prefer. Monty Clark is a huge guy, a good friend of mine when he was here, um, really helped me out with the uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes where we became good friends through. So I have a lot of Detroit connections happening throughout the special teams. Um, this is uh, your attitude towards coaching and special teams will determine how successful your specials will be. In my, uh, throughout my 18 years, I've had so many people give me lip service, how they're committed, even my, some head coaches, not my high school guys there, but throughout my 18 years, it was a, a lot of lip service. And then when things got started, it was like shutting me down on everything. Um, one coach that was really gave me advice was um <laughs> now the name slips my mind I do apologize um uh, he gave this coach gave me a great advice of never switch what I was doing and you'll see what as I get going here um all the the movements and stuff and my philosophy and and everything I do falls through um as soon as I remember I got so many coaches names flowing through my mind as soon as I get it in there I'll, I'll, I'll dump that out don't make special teams a punishment. Make it a want, a need. Uh, make it a culture, a culture that everyone must be a part of. Every coach, every trainer, every equipment person has to be a part of this culture. It just can't be one person doing this. So I start off this whole system. This is a whole system building as questions. Uh, and I won't go through tons of stuff here, but devoted time, how much time are you, is your, are you spending on special teams? How much time do you spend on film breakdown, meeting preparation, practice, scouting reports, um, scout team? And we have a thing called S or RSPK, uh, returners, snappers, punters, and kickers. How much time are you spending on those guys? You have a practice plan for those specialists. Is there a specific coach training those specialists that are linked into the special team. So I am a special teams coordinator, full-time. I was the only full-time special teams coordinator in the nation in junior college. That was my job. But on top of that, I was a specialist coach. So to have a guy that's doing specialists and a guy that's doing special teams and not communicating together will cause 
problems. I had it my first year in junior college. I wasn't controlling the specialist and it caused a lot of problems. My second year, that's when everything, I took over everything. So I'm four coaches in one when you look at it. Um, I trained uh, the, all the specialists and then special teams. I was full of control of it. So that's a big thing to happen. You start signaling off stuff to the um, coach uh, kickers and punters, and they have no clue what you're talking about because the kicking coach is doing something totally different. So me, I'm in full control of everything. You only have a few plays to shine, and you got to be perfect on each one of them. Um, you can't expect to be successful in this phase of game if you don't put the time in. It will be the difference at some point in the game. Um, I have many stories that have happened to me and the one i'll share with you is we're winning a game against mesa community college up in mesa in the phoenix area um and there's uh, 25 seconds to go and we have to punt from our five um and uh the punt got off perfect everything was perfect and we pinned them at the 40 yard their 40 yard line Time was running, that ball rolled, 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 and we stayed away from it, and we touched it to the last second, and then handed it to the official. Unfortunately, there was a flag happened at the back of the end, uh, back on my left wing man. They said he was holding. So guess what? Now we're, we're pushed back. And my punter's in the end zone, and I was right on the coach's box, kneeling down, going, <laughs> and I think I jinxed him. Please don't snap over his head. Please don't snap over his head. And I actually didn't say nothing to my snapper. I didn't want to get into his head. And, and he snapped over his head. And I just fell down to one knee and just was like, my God, we lost the game. So it could be the difference maker in the game there. So here's uh, everything starts with my, my support staff. This is my family, my, my daughter, my son. My godson is the Marine in the middle. My wife, myself at Christmas time, support staff. And uh, the reason uh, that's everything to me, and my, my godson's the Marine there, and the Marines are a big sponsor for me. Um, of course, everything starts with the head coach. Um, they got to be active in everything. You can't be not active as a head coach. I'm not telling head coaches what to do, but the head coach needs to show that it's important to him on special teams, i.e. Frank Beamer. So they have to should be attending the meetings, the head coach, uh, without the head coach activity, it's not very, it's very difficult to sell it to the players. Um, communicate, it, communicate everything to the head coach from practice plans to period time. Um, I, I'll tell you this, uh, I've had a lot of head coaches in my meetings. Um, my last head coach, Coach Monaco at Pima College, um, he would pop in here in the meetings. But I asked him one day, Coach, I would like you more in the meetings. Uh, it really shows the players you care about this. And he goes, they know I care. And by the way, if I have to be in those damn meetings, that's why I hired you. You're the best in the nation. I don't need to be in the meetings. I'll pop in off and on, but I got you. I'm, my confidence and everything is with you, that you got everything under control, which is a, it's a nice pat on the back. I still said to him, coach, I still want you to get in the meetings. I don't care about that. I know what I'm doing. It's, it's for the kids. They need to see you pop in and stand there, even if it's for a minute. It's so important that the kids see that from the head coach and from other coaches that they care about it. Um, so great, great special teams can only be executed with the dedication and help from the support from the entire coaching staff. Everyone must be all in on the ST culture. Can't just be one person. So here's a chart. And again, now I'm not going to go through every little detail with this. Uh, so develop a special team philosophy. Uh, select your style of philosophy. Are you aggressive or conservative? Uh, identify special teams objectives and then implement all across the board, the whole system. So let's look at the philosophy aspect. Um, a lot of coaches have called me on this. Um, why do you know how they create a philosophy? My philosophy has changed throughout my 18 years. And I'll tell you this, coaches. If Make your philosophy how you want to make it. This is what I feel. We're aggressive, physical, approach, attack, oriented system. We are coming after you nonstop to put punishment in you. 
It's a military mindset. So our goals, we have a mission and we have to accomplish it by any means necessary, but we follow the strict guidelines of football. We're not out there to hurt anybody, injure anybody, but we use fundamentals uh, and we are, and all the technique we use is all football. We use multi formations and misdirection to cause confusion and doubt with protection and blocking schemes. So we're using multiple multiple formations all over the place to confuse everything, but we're using our protection and blocking schemes. Our system is designed to create mental pressure on our opponents and keep them off balance. We are always, always in a hurry up, deep, hurry up tempo and take control, uh, that take controls of the kicking game by using fundamentals and uh, by being fundamentally and technically sound. All this is done without sacrificing execution. Well, crippling our opponent's arsenal and extinguishing their hope. I want guys to line up against my boys and say, holy crap, how do we stop them? And we do everything technically and fundamentally sound. We don't risk any football stuff. So people look at all my stuff and go, what the hell is this? We are doing everything football with a military mindset to it. We show no mercy to ourselves. We set high standards and goals. And the kids set all the standards and all the goals. We talk about this. It's their unit. My job is just to control it. And here's our keys to assess consistency, efficiency, intensity, desire, effort, discipline, concentration, enthusiasm. It has to be going all the time. We don't strive to be good. We're not even striving to be the best. We will be devastating. I want to devastate my opponent. And it showed in my kickoff units, holding everyone inside the 19-yard line for the last nine years at the JC level. So you got to select your style of uh, coaching, coaches. You, you got to choose one. This is from Frank Beamer. Are you going to be an attack unit that will put consistent pressure on your opponents? That's me right there. I am that. Or are you looking to just contribute and, uh, to the winning game and not screw anything up? You don't, Do you want to be the equalizer? Um, or do you just want to establish field positions and not make any errors? Um, I am an attack unit on every unit. I'm coming after you from punt to punt return to kickoff to kick return to field goal to field goal block to my hands team. We are coming after you all the time. So I'm not going to read all these questions. I'll leave it up here for a second on the board. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this. Um, uh, I'm a risk taker. I will fake every game on punt um, unless my head coach rounds me. Um, so I am always going after you. I, I want specials to be a huge contributor to every game. And almost every game that I've coached in, we are. We have a huge impact. Um, so those are one through five questions. One of the biggest ones was number five. Are you going to use the you're going to use your best guys on specials. you got to use your, your, your Cadillacs and Porsches on specials. Um, how important is field position? Number seven, are you willing to use trick plays? That's me. In my arsenal, my playbook is over 220 pages of different plays. And around, we have 25 different style of kick returns. Um, and I say that, 25 different formations of kick returns. But here's the thing. It's all the same play. It's all the same play on kick return, but different setups. And coaches are sitting there going, 200 and something plays. How the hell do you do that? I don't use every play. We use 15 formations every year on punt. Um, and those formations move every year from different formations. So you can never pick up on me. We do have our base punt. We have, a, we have our uh, pro style and our shield punt, and then everything works off of that. Identifying special teams objectives. So this is what I teach the kids. I don't just, we don't just have meetings to have meetings. 
I try to teach them. I feel it's more important to be a teacher out on the field than anything. And this is what uh, our objective is to take control of the kicking game with a clear, crystal clear understanding of these, how, when, where, techniques, fundamentals, discipline, and communication. Be consistent in coaching and, and teaching. That's me. I stay, we stay constantly with doing stuff. Stay consistent with your philosophy. I never change. Uh, don't let little errors go unnoticed. If you make an error on my unit, I will come up and talk to you. I will be whispering in you. I will pull the unit around me. I will blow the whistle and say, everyone gather around me and talk about what, I, what just happened um, and make sure that we correct it. And the reason I do that is not to point someone out and so the rest of that unit knows. And then we break off and get back in the spots. Sweat the small details. I sweat every small detail. I'm kind, I've had people kind of like a Bill Walsh. Every little thing irritates me and I gotta make sure it's correct. Focus on the procedure or the process that will produce the results. So here's uh, the objective stuff. So our unit, our kickoff unit's the kamikaze and we show the kids this. Our goal is to hold everyone inside the 19 yard line. So our goal is to hold them inside the 19 yard line. Our objective is to be aggressive, gain tackling, front line, stay, uh, avoid the front line, stay in the coverage lanes, um, all out sprint down field, full zones. So we try, our goal is to keep them inside, but how are we gonna do that? That's our objective is how we're doing that. So we teach this to all the kids and we make sure they understand the objectives. Um, so we may say, hey guys, our goal on kickoff is what? The kids will know it's inside the 19 yard line or better, and how are we doing this? And, and I'll hit kids up different times. Hey, how are we doing that? During a, walking through the hallway, hey Joe, come here. What's our objective on this? Just to keep them constantly engaged. So here's your organizational chart. The implementation, this is everything that I started with. And, um, I'll leave this up for a sec um, so everyone can read through it. Um, this is everything I started with when I started in 2003. Uh, I kept track of everything I was doing in this order. Um, let me look real quick. Unit drills are gonna be important and everyone can grab different drills. Uh, practice schedule, that's big, and practice plans. Uh, walkthroughs, uh, how I do my walkthroughs is a lot different. We do everything situational. Our practices are situational and you'll see that later on down there. Uh, grading systems, I created a, the, the playbook obviously. And recruiting questions and that's more of a college. If I'm recruiting a high school player back in Michigan, I'm asking that player 50 different questions and those questions are all to get to know them, to get to know their personalities. So here's my uh, practice, practice, practice. Yes, we're talking about practice. We do a situational practice. Everything I do is situations. Um, I pretty much got this from Coach Belichick. Um, we are on a time scale, so we can't be wasting time. So uh, no walking around the field. We are moving from situation to situation. Um, so basically to give you a better look, we don't just go out and punt 10,000 balls. We have situations that we practice. And we start our punt unit just like we would on game day from the sideline. And we make sure the kids understand how they're gathering around me on the sideline. So we go through everything that would happen on game day. We start off our practice by taking a safety. And we do punt twice a week. So we take a safety each time and make sure the kids clearly understand how to take a safety. We just don't line up, safe, that's it, we move on. We line up and kind of talk quickly about it, make sure everyone understands and everyone gives a thumbs up. So we're make sure we're uh, clean and uh, clear and clean on, on repetitions. Uh, we go over practice plans and scripts in every meeting. Um, we, will, we will follow the script, but I don't get off track of it. Um, we, uh, we don't run around, everything's done, um, everything is done on purpose. I'm gonna move my little thing out of the way here. Um, in short bursts, uh, everything, uh, everything we do is, is planned to detail. 
poison. Uh, we don't go rogue on anything. And it must be perfect. We have eight minutes per session. And yes, I pushed up to 10 minutes per session. Eyes, ears, and mind are fully opened and no mistakes on execution. Um, so uh, I won't go through all of this. Uh, no wasted reps. Uh, ready at the horn. Um, importance uh, to script everything to the smallest details. And I have a practice plan coming up here soon. Um, do not hold the clinic on the field, guys. Don't add stuff to last minute. Make sure as a coach you already have your stuff in your practice plan. And everything, everything, everything starts in the meetings. Everything starts in the meetings. Go over the practice plan in the meetings. Um, so the players know what to expect on the field. Make sure it's a, everything's known, what you're doing, what day you're doing it. Be consistent. Here's just your practice script of a rundown of it. All staff must have a practice script. And I'll give you an example here coming up soon of the practice script. Um, so we start everything off with specials in the first uh, the beginning of practice. So uh, we'll, after stretch, we immediately head coach talks. We immediately go over to our auxiliary station and where our field goal post is. And we are, we're on a two minute PAT. Um, and then we move after that two minutes, we go right over the main field again. And then we're on whatever unit of that day is. It keeps everything more intense. The guys are fresh um, and it's a better execution to do it in the beginning of practice. But here's a fun thing. During the practice, I have a schedule with my head coach and we will do fire drill. So the kids did catch on to this after a while when they see me mosey over to the field. Um, and at that point, that's fine. Um, we, do a, we do hit a drill, a quick unit in the middle of practice and near the end. They just don't know what unit's coming. So I will give my head coach a signal, he'll look at me and he'll blow the whistle. He already knows, he'll blow the whistle and the minute he points to me and I'm yelling for that unit. And this is all we do. We yell for kickoff, kickoff. They gather around me around the 30 yard line. I give them the, what we're doing and they line up. The kicker starts his approach. We he kicks, does a fake kickoff. They only run, 10 yards, whistle blows, they're back in the practice. During somewhere during the end of practice or near the end of practice, we'll do it again. Same thing, everyone gathers around me and we run that unit. My practice plan for punts, as you see, number one, we only do 10 punts. And then we go into a tight formation, we call it eagle tight, and that's inside at the 15 yard line. And then we start to move up. My kickers are placing the balls. As you see on the left side, it says, LH, RH, those are, this is all hash days. On the top, you'll see lanes, hashes, directional kicks only this day. So the kickers are placing the balls where I need them. They have a script also. And we are going through base formation, eagle spread. And as you look down, it says the green zone. Um, the green zone is what I call from R45 to our opponent's 40. Um, my punters go to a one step punt where directionally. And this involves the gunners. One of the crucial part of punt is my gunners. And they have to understand we're on hashes that we're going high and low. So we do a spread look to this and they have to know where they're at in their release points. Um, and we're coaching them up again in the meetings being coached up. The kids know this and the reason they know it so they can move quick to the what we're doing. I never stray from this all season long. We use the same thing right here. Um, during my second stunt during the week, um, we will go into our punt fakes and we will go into the green zone also. So that's my practice plan. Um, practice overview, um, our practice evaluation we do, we look at everything during it. I use a grading system and that grading system keeps track that's posted each week. Um, for games and practice so the guys know well, how they're doing. You gotta review the stuff with them. 
um, uh, and use the uh, cut-ups and, and, and charts on it. Um, player's mindset, you only have one shot on specials again. Um, you got to be devastating. The players got to rally behind you. My guys rally behind me. They take on the persona of my special operations. If they're not have that pumped up killer instinct, then I get them out of there. Um, they got to know the role and do their jobs. They were always believe they're going to be explosive play to make an explosive play. It's important to create that focus and energy immediately with specials. So the players have to understand that they are a devastating unit that they will destroy. Reinforce the must all the time. And the kids will hear me. We must be this. We must do that. There's no excuse of anything except mission accomplished or mission failed. And we do not fail. Here's an um, organizational guideline. Coaches can look at that. I'll just keep that up for a second. Um, I use this when I kind of run away from this a little. Um, I kind of just grab two coaches to help me, and that's it. I don't need 10,000 coaches. Quarterback coach can do his thing, line coaches. I only use line coaches for punt, um, for the line protection, and I grab my guys, and I always, always ask my line coaches. I had an incredible line coach here at Pima College named Dan Linden, incredible guy. Um, and I told him if I, when I ever get up to the next level, Division One, I, I will, I will be bugging our coach to bring this guy in. He's an incredible coach. He's so good at teaching. I, I love the guy to death. Um, so uh, I use line coaches, for P, uh, field goal, PAT, and then uh, punt. Uh, my returning guys uh, are used with the receiving core. Uh, most of the time, I have receiving coaches back there. Communicate the techniques. He's positional coach, and uh, each coach uh, utilize each coach's uh, abilities uh, as a result to that unit. Open uh, your mind to different techniques. I'm I'm a sponge. 18, 19, going on 18 years now. I am always grabbing knowledge, trying to think outside the box on stuff. Some things that I do, coaches look at me and go, "What the hell is this?" Um, and it's outside the box thinking, constantly outside the box thinking. I've been told stuff that won't work, it won't happen. That's that won't. That's not football. No, my stuff works because it's outside the box thinking. It's very important that each coach is visual, uh, uh, visually participating in the parts of the preparation process. Coaches need to be involved that are with you. So I use two. Try to use two coaches, and and a line coach and they need to be involved with me. So important players uh, see how important specials are to each coach um, and, and, and make sense of urgency. These players, let me tell you guys, will pick up if you're the only one that cares. I've had coaches in meetings go, coach, why isn't any coach in these meetings? Um, how do you answer that? <laughs> how do you answer that, guys? How do you answer that you're the only one in these meetings and no other coach is in there? It must, it's a must be just as important as offense and defense. It can't just be that third part of the game. It has to be important. So on that point, I bug my coach at all time. Can my, can my best unit, best unit in that last game, can they eat first? So now the players are going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why does a kickoff unit got to eat first? Dominated the game. They get to eat first. We have a representative of special teams, and that's uh, coaches all vote on this to represent the captain. Why is only offense and defense representing the captains out there? The special teams are so important, there should be a special teams representative out there, and that should change every week by performance. Positional coaches must get, give their players the same focus and intense coaching that is required to be devastating on specials. All coaches must hold each other accountable as they would uh, uh, the players. So coaches need to be accountable just as much as players. Coaches and support staff must bring the 
and here's I'm gonna use this E U T M every day, and it must be the culture. And the E U T M, I heard uh, a coach say this once. Uh, he's with the uh, Michigan um, coach Harbaugh. Uh, intensity unknown to mankind. And I thought, that's what I want on special. Intensity unknown to mankind. I want that on my unit nonstop. So here's your personnel. Be the best of the best on specials. Um, identify those unique players. If you're not putting your best players, and it doesn't have to be every player, but for a special teams coordinator, I want, I want some Cadillacs. I want some Porsches. I want some hot rods mixed with some um, I don't want to say Yugos or some Hondas, but I need those high-powered uh, players on my units. It's a proven fact in Scottsdale, my head coach said, do what we need to do, put the best of the best down there, and we did, and we were devastating. Um, same with Co uh, my head coach at Pima College. Um, he let me do the same thing, and we dominated. So when you're a head coach, put your best of your best down there. If you really want to win, add those Yugos and those players, they will step up. Those second players, those number twos and threes, if they know that they have to be on specials, they will step up. I use two-unit squads, and listen, give those second units a lot of reps because you don't know when the second units, you have to depend on them. There are areas that are important uh, to play with. Uh, you don't want to mess around with this on specials. Um, you have to have a PhD, passion, hunger, and discipline. All the schemes in the world don't matter. I use tons of schemes, and yes, they don't matter. It's all about the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's. Unfortunately, part of me is it is about the X's and O's for me. But I, yeah, it's, I find the right Jimmys and Joes to execute. And I get the Jimmys and Joes to buy into my system. And the kids love it. They don't just buy in. They stay in. They want to be in the system. Special teams are a special phase of the game. So each unit requires a special, uh, unique style to it. So I'm going to go through all this um, game day decision stuff. I'll just leave this up for a quick second. Um, I uh, Everything goes through me on specials. Um, I make decisions. I have someone up top and below helping me out. Um, and we play inside the rules of special teams. Um, I'll leave this up to make sure you got your eyes in the box telling you everything that's going on. I always demand that I'm on a headset. I cannot be on a headset. I got to hear everything that's happening so I can fix things right away. Special operations award system. So this is what we do, special operations. We do uh, um, pull tag, which is on your right here. Um, kids love it. We do t-shirts, we do operation coins, which you'll see on the right here also. We have special operation coins that I've got made. Um, pictures and display in locker room and on social media. Uh, they get uh, uh, payday candy bars. Uh, Butterfinger candy bar fun. Certain players get those. And then we got the unit name. Um, they do get, uh, uh, we get um, stickers on our helmets and you need, uh, a unit photos in the locker room and all over the place. And each unit gets to eat first. Um, when you're, uh, so here, here's a great thing I learned from Coach uh, uh, Vermeil, uh, when your unit, when you recognize uh, great performance technique, behavior, and you don't realize that in that moment, in front of everybody, you distinguish that behavior. It stops. So when you see great things happening, recognize it right then. Make it loud. Make it proud. Everyone sees that. When you witness poor behavior, tech performance, and you don't correct it in that moment, you are endorsing that. And I use this to the thing all the time. I use this. 
Um, if you don't correct it, you're endorsing that bad behavior. So when you see something wrong, stop it right away and, and, and bring, bring everybody in, that's what I do, and correct that behavior. Um, this is uh, the little thing that we did, my, one of my first punters. Um, uh, so we, this is the theme we put up online. Um, so this is it, special operations. Uh, this is what I did. Uh, everything got boring my first year, 2000, uh, really when we started doing kickoff or special teams. So we had the, the what, when, and how. We had to change everything. We let the kids make all these calls, and we had let the kids make the decisions of what we should call things. So I won't go through all this. Um, I'll let it sit there for a second because there's a bunch of them. But this is everything we went through. Uh, weekly scouting reports, um, weekly days and uh, unit meetings. So we transformed everything from, it's typical special team stuff, we, we made it a big issue, a big point. This is more stuff that we, uh, what we did, uh, created fun atmosphere, exciting, brought team chemistry, keeping everyone close. It's all about the units. So it's, uh, this is all about communication and trust. And I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna say this just like I would do in a, in a meeting, because this is what I do show in a meeting. It's, a, it's not hard to execute the play call. And that's what I tell the guys. Hard is everyone focusing and communicating the call. Knowing your assignments and doing your assignments. Trust that your teammates are doing your job. Trust they will play their asses off. Trust they will impose their will. And that's what we do all the time. And I heard Greg Williams say that, and Greg Williams is a, I love that guy. He's so intense. Oh, he's an incredible coach. And that's what he said one time, and I went, I gotta, I gotta say this all the time. So that's what I tell the guys, if you do these items, I'm gonna go through all these items. If you do these, guess who you play for? Damn right, the other team. So if you play for the other team, Take your butt over to the sidelines because uh, you're not helping us, you're helping them. And I tell the kids that all the time. If you're, if you're making penalties that are, are, are ridiculous and not focusing and doing your job, then you're playing for the other team. So get over the sideline. So um, this, is, uh, this is my special operations first uh, uh, briefing. We don't have meetings, we have briefings. Um, and this is what we do. Um, I tell the kids all the time, we talk about special, team, special operations, what it's about. Um, call me Coach V, Coach Vitale. Um, v, you don't call me a buddy or friend or dude. Um, any questions I ask the kids. Um, we talk about effort um, because there's no special drills or anything to show effort. And we talk uh, important stuff, briefing, uh, briefing rules, uh, philosophy. Um, we talk about um, the rules in our briefing, it's only four rules. Uh, if you're not on time, it's a 15 minute penalty. Um, so if uh, uh, the meeting door shuts at three o'clock and you're not in the meeting room, that's a 15 yard penalty. That whole unit has to be, uh, after, the, after our, our practice, we'll uh, meet for 15 minutes for me to go over some drills. And they're not drills, they're, they're military drills. They're not fun. Um, come prepared, make sure uh, uh, arrive uh, empty handed, and that means you don't care. Be respectful. Um, there's uh, no talking during the, during the meetings or the briefings and no sleeping and, no, and there's no homework or phones or anything uh, with that nature, no electronics at all. So that's our meeting. This is our, our brief, our brief, uh, our briefings. Uh, this is our, our meetings. Shows you each day what we do um, and what units there are. Uh, is, uh, so it shows everything that you have. So the kids know and we show that all over. Um, this is a, a no, a no, uh, uh, oh, what would you call it? 
po uh, poster that I have. Um, I'll keep that up there for a second there. Um, this is our core meetings. Um, we have a, a work, a produce, uh, um, swarm, strike. This is stuff that I just created. Um, we should talk about this with kids. Okay, so briefing uh, setup. Uh, unit. Uh, the unit uh, intro, that's done one time. So we uh, go, go through one time. Um, briefing, uh, briefing um, rules. Um, and that's just no, no phones, no earbuds, nothing like that allowed in the meetings, in the briefings. Um, we actually set up people. So our, uh, our, our punt unit example is everyone is, is seating just like we're, we are, um, the unit is. So a, a snapper, guard, tackle, they're all set up that way. Uh, beginning uh, with, uh, so this is what we do. Well, once we uh, sit down, our seating, and uh, we stand up and we clap, I go, hell yeah. We hell yeah, everyone does, and then we sit down. We do a VVOP, Vital, uh, Vitaly's video, um, uh, and uh, what we do is, um, the uh, uh sorry <laughs> we we get a minute to two minutes it's a video and um it could be anything just something fun so it's going to be like uh mike tyson um something funny just to, to break the monotony of everything um so we do hell yeah so we're doing a reward. So we have hell yeah reward, uh, a limited uh, elite operative, um, an R2 player award, which not is an R2 unit from Star Wars. That's Rudy Rudiker award, that, that one player that dominates that busts his butt. And then a unit award is mo and the Monday. So we, we do reward on Monday. Uh, review, uh, we review film and we're um, ending at the end of uh, briefings, um, we clap again and then hell. Um, and the reason we say hell yeah is uh, we do Stone Cold Steve Austin from WWF, we say hell yeah. It's just fun, creative, have fun. So we do timing, uh, importance, uh, um, communicating on an F information and then filming we make sure that we focus just on what we're doing and uh, looking for tendencies i'll let you uh, just read that real quick so this is a a, a unit that uh well this is a poster actually so do not we do not make we do not make um Mistakes, we do not make, we don't, we do not ran, do random, and they're always objectives, always a target. And we, um, I heard, I heard this is for, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, oh gosh, no, I'm sorry, uh, the meeting, uh, um, a movie that I saw that we don't make mistakes, we don't do random, they're always a, a obje objectives and always a target. So we tell these kids all the time, and we have uh, uh, posters in the meetings uh, throughout the locker rooms and everything. Um, this um, is just a, a chart, charts that we have that we go through. Um, this is a, our, uh, our uh, units and their goals. So all the, the players actually create the, the goals. We don't make it as a coach. The units make those goals and then we track it. If you look on the right hand, it says H and M in, in green and in red. We're letting the players that they hit hit 
or miss those goals. And the players only do three three goals. That's it. And those for the whole unit or full uh, year. Um, this is just a, a this is a our our cover for our our scouting report. Okay, for our Ronison report. And every player or every team that we play. So we have uh, Operation uh, Bear uh, Bear uh, um, uh, uh, Tramp. One of the uh, uh, units that we played, our teams that we played, and that's where we give them Operation Operation Bear Trap. All right. Um, so we put our their our team that we're playing with their um, help. Um, this is all the uniform uh, unit, units that we have. Kamikaze unit and all state. That's our kickoff and on and onside uh, unit. Bomb Strug, That's our punt punt unit. TNT unit. That's our punt return unit. The recon unit and that's our kick return unit. And then our seal slash H and R block unit. And that's our field goal PAT stuff. And then our uh, field goal uh, P PAT uh, block unit. When all else fails, we don't. When all else fails, we can or we do. So when all else fails, we don't fail. When no one else can, L, uh, no one else can, we do. Here's a. Uh, some stuff from one of our, our head coach and one of our four players, and that's a, a promote and demote our players. This is our stuff that we do, um, promote or demote. If you're in your job and we, we help you and still try to get you going and, and you don't get it, then we promote you, promote, de demote you off, the, off that unit. So what's it all about? It comes down to, uh, doing your job, trusting each other, um, accountable, and living around the unit. This is all the characteristics that we want um, for our players. Attitude, nastiness, but I want kind and good players, trolls, uh, tr trustworthy, and players that are all about the team. The keys to my success are, are basically this, communication, trust, organization, structure, accountability, accountable and discipline, and then the PhD, passion, hunger, and discipline. E, e U T M all the time. And then of course, teach them and coach them up, love them up, teach your young, young men to be men. And then we do our jobs, we own our jobs, know our jobs, and execute our jobs. And that's our philosophy all the time on it. And so S, this is our last little thing right here, the uh, SA unit, that, that is the, uh, uh, one of our units that we, we actually it's a whole unit all. And the, D, the D3 is dominate, devastate, destroy our, our opponents. Um, the, 212 at 211 the water is just hot at 212 it's boiling hot so it's just that one degrees that makes the difference so we always are at 212 all the time and do an f11 that is basically comes down to the f5 is the worst uh, um, the F F five is the worst door, and at you is the worst thing that's ever going to hit you. So, um, that's what F F eleven is. And and this is a uh, some uh, some stuff here that the Marines have done with me. And this is more stuff that we do with the military.
And we have the Marines help us all the time doing, um, we do military um, stuff all the time um, in August before. So we bring the Marines in and we spend around two to three hours of doing military, military drill um, with these kids. So these are just this drills that they did with the kids. And then this is my information um, all about where I am, my uh, all my emails and my phone number. Um, never forget when you come, when it, where come, where you come from, and coach with your passion every day. Use your platform to make a difference. Um, I do about uh, here and there. Uh, Stuttering off there, guys. I was trying to think of different things as I was going. And I really appreciate you guys. Uh, look forward to coming to Michigan uh, in January at the conference. So thank you very much. And uh, have a great day and a great season coming up.